Yes, yes, yes. Calm yourself. Calm yourselves. Uh, obviously, I'm Johnny Boy, the Consumer Monkey McDonald. This is the Victoria Bill YouTube channel. And what can I say about this guy today? Man, yes, he's a rock star. Yes, he's a branding expert. Yes, he's an incredible human being. Yes, he has an origin story that if you get to find out about it, my God, you want to deal with this person because he would buy people at the end of the day and he is a person that I felt compelled to offer an interview on this usually female heavy channel. So I give you the amazing Kane Levy. Kane, how are you? Hey, mate. Good to see you. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Very well, very well. And um, the degree to which I like you as an individual is the reason why I've asked you on this mainly female podcast. Um, and you've got, right, so we can talk about what you do. But I latch on to stories. So you've got quite an origin story, haven't you? Can you tell yeah. me a bit about that? For sure. Firstly, it's very refreshing to say someone likes me that much to invite me on a podcast. That's not that's not <laughs> that's not the norm. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. So um, before I got into branding, my background was as a heavy metal drummer. Mm -hmm. So throughout my teens, I was touring the UK. I was writing albums for the band with my brother for all the all the various parts of the band: bass, wow. guitar, drums, the whole thing. Except except vocals. We stay away from vocals. Um, and that was just an amazing period of time. And I was endorsed by brands myself at the time and just kind of became a has-been before I hit 20. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what was really cool about that was I was in front of the camera a lot um, in music videos. So I started to get a really sort of keen interest in the camera and lighting and cinematography. And when I got to 18 and they were going around the record number of Oxford and Cambridge graduate uh, students uh, acceptances at my school um and then they came around to little old me and they were like what do you want to do and i said i want to be a musician mm -hmm. my dad said uh, you probably should get a degree and, and and get a real job so what did i decide to do i said well i'm going to go to film school then <laughs> <laughs> so i just went an adjacent path i didn't actually listen um but that was kind of the marriage of the music and the film i think my interest in how audio and video affects the emotions and affects people psychologically led me naturally down that path so went to film school became sort of a director producer did short and feature films which screened around the world and on tv and in cinemas which is really cool wow um, but eventually fell out of love with with that industry i found it a little bit too political um mm -hmm. so i started a production company where i was using very much of the same skill sets for mm -hmm. corporate, corporate work and clients um and then eventually fell into branding when I discovered that a lot of businesses have no flipping idea what they're doing. So no instead of being at the end of the chain saying, hey, we've got these concepts, can you execute them? Yeah, cool. And then 50% of the time it would work and 50% of the time it would just fall flat. Um, we decided to pivot towards uh, strategy and branding and really get involved on the front end to help with uh, decision making. So anyone's looking at this video, um, I think it's quite important to understand what branding is and it is not. I know you've got a whole book on your website, Kane, but basically tell me quickly or tell them quickly what branding is not. Yeah, great question. Um, branding is not, for me, logos, pretty colors, pictures, typography. These are all visual representations of the brand. Mm -hmm. But we've really been clear about how we position venture in the market, which is it's not about that stuff. It's about how all that stuff, along with all the other parts of brand, so your vision, your mission, your positioning strategy, your messaging, your understanding of your customers, how all of these contribute to commercial growth for the business. So that's very much how we position ourselves is the commercial side of branding, not the visual representation of branding. Do think both parts are important, but ultimately at the end of the day, let's not kid ourselves. We're here to make more money, save more time or grow our businesses. And Absolutely. so that's why I think branding is really powerful at doing. Very, very good. And I'm, I mean, I suppose that um, the multimedia aspect of your early life, um, have you heard about this 10,000 hour rule to become I a person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So 
I experienced it happening as I was volunteering in primary schools. I noticed, because I was writing it down, how much better I was 10 years in than I'd been at the beginning. So you've got 20 years of the most unusual and diverse sensory experiences. And I can see how branding isn't colors and logos to you i was reading somewhere it might have been a tv motor show but it was about the how so when you get into a car your brand perception is the way the steering wheel feels the way the gear shift feels and pretty much the noise the doors close when they when they close and you muck up only of those three and the car feels cheap right. so Mm-hmm. so who do you want to be speaking to as as from my company no yeah yeah from your company to be at that strategic and financial level yeah no it's it's a great it's a great point and what you're describing jonathan is an experience and that really is mm. what branding is all about i mean i like to think of it as kind of like a cv mm. so when you're hiring for 100 different people Anything you can do to whittle down those people, right? Okay, grades, background, experience, interview, personality, all these things are helping you whittle down the ideal candidate. And I kind of like to think of branding as the same thing. So it's like how many layers of tick boxes can you give clients or customers to choose you and do business with you over someone else? So Mm. in terms of the sort of businesses that we speak to, we have a, a quite a broad range in that we're not niched in industry, but we're very niche in our service. So we fully focus on the kind of brand and go-to-market commercial strategy side of branding. Um, so for us, we do mostly B2B and service-based businesses. I'd say 80% is B2B and service-based. Uh, mm-hmm. The other 20% is products. You know, we've done chocolate and all sorts of other fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, it's I find the, the the leadership teams and the CEOs who who run with brand and make it a commercial success the most are ones who have a creative tendency or proclivity to their to their behavior and their mannerisms i think the ones who are strictly in the technical and the operational struggle to grasp what brand means and it has mm. become a very fluffy term and so by bringing it back to the commercial side but reminding yourself that creativity is what sparks unique positioning strategies marketing campaigns and all these other things is is really the key to making brand work for you as a company Absolutely. Listen, I used to work for Yellow Pages, which you're probably too young to even remember it. I remember great, it very oh, well. John. Okay, yeah, great big very phone well. book. So I dealt with loads of SMEs or SMBs, and one of the okay. So there's two things that I'll just say about um, about small businesses um, with regard to marketing in any sense of the word and branding in a specific sense of the word. So these days, you look at someone's website. And I've got a bit of software that I can look at the back end of your website and see what's installed. Mm-hmm. And 80% of companies do not have Google Analytics. And I've been to, um, what do you call those meetings, lunch meetings, that sort of stuff. And people will say to me, oh, it's all right, Jonathan. We don't get any inquiries from our website. And I'm like, really? Um, so... The two things I'd say is that people don't measure where they get what from in any way, shape, or form. And number two, that they think it's colors or this or that, the other. And your service is quite distinct in that it requires a business plan and a marketing plan and a budget and an objective for you to work properly you're not in this uh, commodities market of colors and shapes and clouds. Is that fair? That's that's spot on, Jonathan. And to be honest, they don't have to have those things in place. We help them discover that stuff because brand and go-to-market strategy, and even if you're in the market, those things change, like your sales channels, your distribution channels, you know, pricing. These things all have to adapt with your customers, what they say to you, the reviews, the market. But what you've described is, uh what i call kind of a brand echo chamber where people get stuck in the same thought processes of what they believe is working when they have no data to back it up but the data is only one half of it that's the 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 quantitative stuff the statistics but you also need the qualitative stuff so the thoughts and behaviors and the feelings so if i were doing some market research for a food company and you know i wanted to find out how their customers buy or what they buy 
I could do a survey and say, hey, do you buy frozen food? And 30% of them might say yes. Hmm. But if I go undercover and do some observational studies and follow them into a store, I might find that that number doubles or even more. And that tells me that people are maybe afraid, for example, to tell you that they that they don't that they buy frozen food maybe there's a there's a self-limiting belief in terms of their yep. health they don't That's want you to judge them right so those two things working together tell you so much more about how to make decisions for your business than just the statistic alone with mm. those two things together i can now say right so people enjoy frozen food but they are worried about the connotations of what that means for them what can i do in terms of product development to bridge that gap Mm, very good very good we do like a bit of secret shopper um there's a very good undercover millionaire yeah yeah there's a very good book i I read a a while ago called everybody lies Mm. and basically they took all the data sets from google and for example um it's widely believed that trump's supporters are all like hillbillies and uh, mid american type you know steel and industry car working that sort of working type uh, person but um this book everybody lies looked at where the majority of racial abuse was coming from when obama spoke and it's all down the east and west coast mm yeah so the more, the more yeah. liberal, liberal areas yeah so um that i found very interesting okay so um we're going to come up to your song which is follow the light i i don't need to ask you why you chose it because i just listened to it but i will ask you why you chose it yeah. what else what should people do i'm going to include your linkedin profile your website uh your email uh in the the notes for this is there anything what's the call to action Oh, wow. I mean, obviously, if you want to learn more about how we work and what we do, you can go to the website. But really, we give so much away for free. Uh, I would encourage you to download the ebook that Jonathan mentioned earlier. It's nearly 40 pages and pretty much tells you everything that we do and how to do it and everything that I've talked about in this in this little podcast about how to find your ideal customers, how to find out what they need from you uh, and how to really design a brand experience catered to those people and then market it to them. Um, so, I mean, we're an open book. If you like what we have to say, you can obviously uh, continue the the conversation with us, but I'm, I'm not hard push on anything. Excellent. Well, uh, you don't need to be a hard push because I'm going to be a hard push. Go to his website and download this book because I'm a Chard Institute of Marketing, Chard Marketeer, blah, 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 this qualification, that qualification. I read this download and I went, mm, and on the basis of it, I now booked an appointment with Kane uh, for next week. So... Thank you, Jonathan. Well, hey, look, truth where truth is told. So follow the light. Why do you like it so much? <laughs> because I thought I would not scare away your audience with the heavy metal side of my background. Oh. So I thought so I thought I'd go with the other half of my background, which is funky. Anything like technically musically gifted mm. uh, just gets me going. Metal does that for me. Funk fusion does that for me. I saw these guys live earlier in the year. And uh, I got to meet them and, and got my my vinyl signed by them. They were just wow. the best guys. And so I just think they're awesome. Excellent. Right. Well, um, thank you very much for watching. Listen to uh, what Kane says. Go to his website. Uh, do you want to just give the web? It will be in there, but just say it anyway. Yeah, it's ventureagency.com. And that's venture without the E on the end. V-E-N-T-U-R. Nice. Um, go there. Okay. Thanks very much for your time, Kane. Cheers, Jonathan. Appreciate it. Bye. Pick up the phone